This video will be an example of how to calculate the Gibbs energy and EMF and standard Gibbs energy and standard EMF of an electrochemical reaction. So our challenge in this video is to calculate the standard EMF, the EMF, the standard Gibbs energy, and the Gibbs energy of reaction for the following electrochemical reaction indicated by this uh, cell diagram. Okay, so first thing, I see the salt bridge in the middle, so I know that I have my anode on the left and my cathode on the right, oxidation occurring at the anode and reduction occurring at the cathode. Um, the problem also indicates that the HCl here is at 0.1 molar, the HCl here is 0.2 molar, and the oxygen here is at a fugacity of 0.8 bar. I don't need to worry about the activity of the silver, silver chloride, or H2O, because those are liquids and solids which are going to always have an activity that's assumed to be one. Okay, so first thing to do here is to draw the individual half cell reactions. So this half cell here, I have, looks like a, I have a silver electrode with a silver chloride salt going to uh, HCl. So this half cell reaction here matches up with a silver solid plus a Cl minus aqueous anion goes to silver chloride plus an electron. And the other half cell over here, what this matches up with is the reaction of H2O liquid plus two electrons reacting to form one half O2 in a gas molecule plus two H plus aqueous. Okay, so next thing to do would be to look up the standard reduction potentials of each of these half cells. So uh, here I've drawn the oxidation, so in the, in the reduction tables it'll be the reverse of this. This is the electrolysis of water, so the reverse reaction of that would be in a reduction table. Standard reduction potential of my anode is 0 0.222 volts, joules per coulomb. Standard reduction potential of my cathode is plus 1.229 volts. Okay, next thing I need to do is to balance out the stoichiometry of these reactions. So I could multiply the top by 2 and the bottom by 1, and then I'd have the number of electrons be balanced, because I, I need to have the same number of electrons in the anode and the cathode to balance that out. Uh, but instead, I'm going to multiply them by 2 and 4 so that I get an integer number of O2 molecules. Um, that's an arbitrary choice there. Uh, what's going to end up happening is it's just going to end up doubling my Gibbs energy of reaction, but it would be equally valid to multiply by, uh, by 2 and 1 here. So if I do that, what this ends up uh, going to is a total net reaction of 2 H2O liquid plus 4 silver solid plus 4 Cl minus aqueous yields 4 AgCl solid plus O2 gas plus 4 aqueous H plus ions. Okay, so what is our standard EMF of this cell? I should not have a delta in that answer. EMF does not have a delta in it. Okay, so our EMF of the cell is equal to the standard reduction potential at our cathode where reduction occurs minus the standard reduction potential of the anode where oxidation occurs. So that's plus 1.229 volts minus plus 0 .0, 0 0.222 volts for the other case. So our standard EMF of this cell is going to be plus 1.007 volts. Okay, what is our standard Gibbs energy of reaction then? Uh, delta R G naught is equal to, from the Nernst equation, minus number of moles of electrons times Faraday's constant times E naught cell equals the number of moles of electrons that are being transferred in this reaction is four. So we see the one up here times four, two down there times two, both of those are four. Four moles of electrons being transferred times 96,485 coulombs per mole from Faraday's constant, times the standard EMF 1.007 volts, which is a joule per coulomb. So coulombs cancel, what we end up getting is the standard Gibbs energy of reaction is negative 388.6 kilojoules per mole. 
So under the standard state, that is a very much spontaneous reaction which prefers to proceed in, the, in a spontaneous forward direction. Okay, so for the Gibbs energy of reaction at the conditions that we have given, delta G of reaction equals standard Gibbs energy of reaction plus RT times the natural log of the reaction quotient. The reaction quotient is in the numerator, the activity of all of the products to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients, divided by, in the numerator, sorry, in the denominator, all of the reactants to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients. So I have silver chloride to the, let's see, yes, silver chloride to the fourth, oxygen to the first, hydrogen H plus to the fourth. On the bottom I have uh, H2O squared, yep, uh, silver to the fourth, and Cl minus to the fourth. All right, as I said here, silver, silver chloride, and water, those being condensed phases, are always assumed to have an activity of one, so those go away. Uh, the molarity of, what's going to remain here? Yep, the molarity, uh, sorry, the fugacity of O2 in our products is 0 0.8 bar divided by one bar that's an activity of 0 0.8. Up here, our H plus in the products is going to have a molarity of 0 0.2 molar over in the cathode. 0 0.2 molar divided by one molar gives an activity of 0 0.2 to the fourth divided by and then we have the we have the activity of our chloride ions from the reactants which is over over here in our anode which is 0 0.1 molar 0 0.1 molar divided by 1 molar gives us 0 0.1 for an activity to the fourth carry out that uh, multiplication you get the the reaction quotient equals 12.8 so the Gibbs energy of reaction equals the standard Gibbs energy, minus 388.6 kilojoules per mole, plus gas constant in kilojoules per mole, uh, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, so divide by 1,000, 0.008314 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. I'm going to assume this reaction is at 298 Kelvin. Uh, pay attention if you're told otherwise or given some temperature to use. 298 Kelvin times the natural log of 12.8. That gives me a final value of negative 382.3 kilojoules per mole. And then finally, the EMF of the cell. Uh, lots of ways I could get it from all the values that I've got here. But the simplest, I believe, is that delta G of reaction equals minus NF E cell. So E cell equals minus delta G of reaction over N times F minus parentheses minus 382.3 kilojoules per mole gives me a positive. 4 times 96,485 coulombs per mole gives me in the end 9.906 times 10 to the minus 4 kilojoules per coulomb or kilojoules per coulomb which would be kilovolts. Yep, kilovolts. So the end ending result once I convert from kilovolts to volts is that the final EMF of my cell is equal to positive 0 0.991 volts. Okay, so overall, under standard conditions, the EMF is positive and the standard Gibbs energy of reaction is negative, so it's spontaneous when the activities of all species are one. And under the conditions given as well, we lose a little bit of that spontaneity, but it's still very much spontaneous in the forward direction with a positive EMF and a negative Gibbs energy of reaction.